Hey everybody, this is Steve Cooper, food app critic for tokemag.com. Uh, I have a one pot recipe app for you this week. This is from Good Food, and it's called One Pot Recipes. Uh, Good Food is a BBC worldwide uh, company, and uh, Good Food has seven apps in total. Um, and some of the other apps I should mention are available for other devices, uh, the Android and if you're in the UK or whatnot, there's uh, you can also get it for uh, your Samsung devices. Uh, the One Pot Recipes is only available for the iOS devices. Um, and I should mention the Good Food recipes. Some of them are also uh, built for the iPad. So, um, but this is not one of them. <laughs> uh, this is just iOS devices. And what you get is 150 one pot recipes. Uh, the app is $2.99 and um, you have a general recipe guide type thing going here um, which is very common. We've seen this a hundred times before. Um, so let, let's talk about what this app delivers and what it does good and what it does do so well. Um, when you open the app it's actually really clever. It's really neat. Um, it comes across with uh, a whole list of ingredients that give you thumbnails across the top and you and I'm just looking at this right now and it's got beef and cheese and chicken and couscous what you can do is you tap one of these and they fly into the uh, the pot below and it will then below the pot give you how many recipes are available with that combination um, this is actually where I first started thinking hmm maybe this thing looks really great but it doesn't function as well as I'd hoped. So it gives you all these thumbnails of the rest of the ingredients. Um, and so, but what it doesn't do is it does not eliminate them dynamically if it doesn't have a recipe for a certain combination. So I went in as soon as I uh, purchased this app, I went in and I added three or four or five things that I, I had in my refrigerator and in my pantry. And I go to click on a recipe and there's none available. And so I then had to start pulling rest, uh, ingredients out of the pot. And so what I was hoping to see is if I pick potato and then I pick tomato and they don't have a recipe that includes both of those ingredients, why give me the option to select them? It should dynamically just not have those as options. As I pick one, certain ingredients are just eliminated. Streamline the process for the end user. This doesn't do that. Um, okay, we'll give it a little pass for now. Um, below there's also the pot, and again, it's a, a clever navigation system. I can swipe the pot left or right, and it will categorize the type of recipe I'm looking for. Vegetarian, uh, five ingredient, uh, low fat. So I can, I can organize um, what type of recipe I'm looking to cook. Uh, so that's the opening page you get the same thing. The button next to it is recipes and this is your standard typical giant scrolling recipe list. Across the top, just like I mentioned, you swipe the pot back and forth to, to unlock the category for five ingredient or low fat. The same thing across the top except it's just uh, using words. So quick, uh, slow cook, and it will limit, it'll uh, narrow down this list below, which is a very nice thing. Um, the search function is also found on this page, and it doesn't work so great. Um, I'm not going to get into a huge thing about it, but a, a quick example is when I dumped beef into one of my pots, it said there were two recipes. When I, or I'm sorry, it said there were 15 recipes. When I did a search for beef, it gave me two results. So as you can see, not the best search. Um, this page also is very nice. It gives you all the standard information. Hope to see how many calories, um, how quick it is, uh, that sort of information. You click on a recipe. Again, very nice. This is actually what I think is the strongest portion of this app, the actual recipe page. You have three tabs across the top. You have an overview, you have an ingredients, and you have a uh, method, which is the cooking instructions. Uh, from the opening page, the overview page, it gives you um, all the standard information, including nutritional information. 
Uh, you can add the recipe to a favorites uh, tab, which I'll get into in a second. You can add it to a shopping list, but I'll get into that in a second. I'll just tell you, don't bother. And then uh, the last thing you can do is you can also share the recipe, Facebook, Twitter, or through email. Um, across the, when you click into the ingredients section, um, that, like I mentioned, this is from the BBC, so they uh, run the metric system, right? So um, we might not always be comfortable cooking with that, especially since all of our measuring tools use the imperial measurement system. They have, uh, you can switch back and forth between the two, uh, which is a very nice thing, I believe. Um, however, saying that, when you click on the methods page, um, some things just don't make the ingredient list, such as water. So there's a coconut curry uh, chicken recipe, I believe, and um, it asks for 200 milliliters of water. And so unless you, and it, and it doesn't give you an option on how to convert that. So, uh, you know, I did what I for, iPhone 4S users would do is I just asked Siri, you know, how many cups does 200 milliliters of water equal, equal and, you know, it gave me an answer. Um, so, you know, that is something you can, I can handle, I can deal with that stuff. <clears throat> There's also a timer in the top uh, right corner of the, of the pages, so you can, particularly when you're doing these slow cook things, it's really nice to just set a timer. Um, now, I mentioned you can go to favorites, I, so you can add um, recipes into favorites. Again, this is one of those favorite lists that just does it alphabetically. You can't categorize them. So even though you can find recipes earlier on in this app by low fat or by uh, slow cook, um, you can't you can't organize them in that manner on the favorites page. So um, there's only 150 recipes on this uh, in this app. So maybe it's not that cumbersome. But I would like to see a little customization options uh, on my favorite section. I mentioned the shop shopping list, and I'm not going to click it now. Um, you know, it went in my cutaway, I'll click, I'll click there. Uh, but basically, you click on the shopping list button at the bottom, and it freezes the app. I uh, tried multiple times. I closed it. I restarted my phone. I even uh, installed this app on a different phone and had the same results. So this is a major glitch. Um, that makes that portion of the app completely useless. And if you accidentally touch it, you got to close out the app and restart it again. So uh, the shopping list, I can't even talk about it because I don't know how well it works other than that it didn't work at all for me. Um, the last thing this app offers is an extras page. And on the extras page, it has some nice things, uh, but not spectacular things. It's got a video section where it has some how-to videos, which are which are... Not as good as you would expect coming from the BBC. Um, I watched a risotto video where they go through the process of making a risotto, uh, but they never show an overhead shot of the actual pot with the risotto in it. Um, the best you get is a is a kind of a side angle where you can kind of see the risotto pile up on the spoon as they're stirring it around, but that's about it. Um, and, a, and a cooking video... I, I, I want to see what that looks like in the pan. I want to know if it's if it, is it bubbling, is it creamy yet? Like what what am I looking for? So that was a little disappointing. Um, the rest of the stuff it has some other tips. It has some substitutions. It has um, uh, uh, pantry staples and other things that are are good information, but nothing to go out and buy this app for. Um, and kind of wrapping this whole thing up. I will say this app looks great. Um, it's 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 very well designed, um, and it's it's easy to understand. It's easy to use. Like I said, the recipe pages look great, um, but the functionality is not quite there. I, I mentioned the shopping list uh, where it just doesn't work. I also had this app crash on me a couple times and just kick me out completely. And the more I used it, the more I tested it the less stable this app seemed to be. So um, I, I guess I would say that while this app looks and feels like it should be a really great app, uh, it just wasn't there for me. It just didn't perform well. Um, I guess it's almost like a first-round draft pick that turns out to be a total bust. Uh, so for that, the best I could do on this app, uh, this is, again, Good Food One Pot Recipes. And, and by the way, I haven't tested any of the other good food recipes, so they may, 
if they, if they were more stable, I, I would probably give them a better grade. Um, but this is the one I reviewed, so this is the best I can do. Um, I gave this a 2.5 out of 5. So if you have this app, uh, let me know what you think of it. If you have other One Pot, or if you've ever tried any other good food recipes, I'd love to hear what you think about uh, your experience using those apps. So uh, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll have a new review up very shortly. Okay, take care.